Hey guys, welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Hero Master. Hero Master is by the noble artist Jamie Noble Fryer and it is for two to four players. It takes about an hour to play the game and it's for ages 14 and up. In the game Hero Master, you're going to be playing as a race and a class. Perhaps you'll be an elf who's also a rogue or perhaps you'll be a dwarf who's also a barbarian. Uh, in the game, you're going to get two uh, certain, you're going to have certain cards from your elf deck as well as um, from your class deck and you're gonna put them together uh, but you're also gonna get two weapons and an armor and of course a player board you have these player boards here which will determine your health and how many cards you're starting off with your hand uh, they're your base weapons that you can change throughout the game as you improve and uh, you're going to have your uh, attacks that you can choose to do throughout the game now when you encounter something you're going to be putting your attack down you can also choose to bungle another player or you can simply do up to all three of these attacks and even use your race and class cards they have their own unique abilities uh, then you're gonna have the leader of the party choose to fight certain monsters as well as locations and if you can defeat all the monsters in the area you're gonna be just fine you may not be winning but you at least won't be dying if not you can suffer some consequences especially when you have bosses that are going to be involved in the game those are gonna be hitting you as well as ambushers whenever you get attacked by something you can attack by that too some crazy stuff occurs the game is basically a take that style cooperative competitive game I know it sounds a little weird think cutthroat caverns all right let me show you what it looks like Here's the game Hero Master and everything that's going to be included, along with, of course, the rulebook and the box. In the game, you're going to be getting enough for four players to play. You've got uh, the player boards here, and what you're going to be using for your attacks, your weapons, your armor, your hero cards, which is going to be race in your class, your health, and of course, how many cards you'll have in your hand. It'll also come with a variety of tokens. These are going to be the different coins you'll be getting, ones, threes, and fives, as well as, of course, your health markers and, of course, your hand marker. These over here, I believe, are party markers basically the person who is the leader of the party is going to get that and a couple extra tokens that will be used depending on if you are the elf or not and uh, one other one you're also going to get these card ability icons you basically play a reference cards it'll tell you how to resolve your turn and separate player decks and as you can see here you've got the uh, race cards over here and uh, the class cards over here like priest rogue uh, barbarian and wizard and then you got human elf halfling and dwarf and you can actually combine these in any way that you would like at the beginning of the game maybe you want to be a human wizard or maybe a human rogue Rogue, an elf rogue or an elf priest you can go ahead and do that and of course each of the different classes are going to have their own unique weapons and whatnot and you'll be using them to start off the game these are basically your basic starting weapons so if the staff of the inner fire and the wand of ice you'll actually put these on your player board along with uh, this one here so it all comes with basic starting cards needed as well as this deck here which is the treasure deck that's going to come with all unique weapons maybe use some unique bungles as well things are going to mess up your opponents and the separate board over here this is where all the monsters and locations are going to be found. Uh, you're going to have two decks uh, for the monsters, the boss deck over here and the basic villain deck over here. You're also going to be getting two separate decks that are to the side, the critical fail deck and of course the protest deck. Whenever you fail something um, or whenever you're not doing very well, you can get one of these cards and whenever you critically fail a roll, you'll get one of these cards. Finally, this is your location deck. This is how you're going to start the game off. There's going to be, I believe, about seven rounds in the game where you're going to be taking this Dragon's Den, the big bad boss and uh, mixing it in with some other unique cards to begin the game this is pretty much all you're going to get in the game all right let's come up and talk about how to set it up and how to play a round or two after the setup of the game, you're going to be simply choosing a leader and rolling a die to determine who that person is going to be, or however you want to go ahead and do that. Maybe the last person to enter a dungeon. And actually, I said uh, six or seven rounds. It's not true. It's actually just about three or four rounds, because what happens is you're going to be setting up this deck of location cards, putting the dragon on the bottom, along with two other ones, shuffling them together, and then taking four other ones at random, shuffling these guys and putting them on top. But at the beginning of the game, after you've chosen your race and your class, along with putting your weapons down and your health and all that when the leader picks the location he'll draw to choose one of them and use that as the location and once you draw the dragons then that's when the game is going to end each round is going to be basically players uh going back and forth either playing bungle cards or playing attack cards you're going to start off on your turn as playing an attack card and you could choose to pass or you can simply play you don't actually have to fight monsters if you don't want to however if you don't fight you're not going to get anything so you have to always be engaged in order to win the game uh bungle cards are used after your first attack card provided that you're in the 
fight or in the location, and you can choose to play them on other players. It will actually mess up their attacks, potentially increase their chance to critically fail, and even make sure that they do not damage the monsters in order enough to destroy them, in which case the monster will attack them as, as well as the ambusher. When you put the location down, you're also going to be adding all the monsters that are included in the location, potentially an ambusher on the side, all of which I'll explain down below. And then you're going to go on throughout the game. You're going to be taking the uh, rounds in steps. So uh, first attacks, everybody's going to do that. Second attacks, and then third attacks. Attacking the monster. Person who kills the monster is going to score the points for it and going to gain the treasure and whatnot. However, gold and treasure is limited based on the number, uh, the location and what monsters are in play. Once they're gone, they're gone and you can't access any more of them. All right, I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like to be set up and a couple rounds of play so you get a good idea of how to play Hero Master. So now we're back to the game, and as you can see, I went ahead and set it up for two players. You got the Elf Barbarian here, and you have the Human Priest here. Each of the different classes have their own unique items, and of course their armor, which I went ahead and set here and here. Their health starts at 10, and their card value starts at 6. That's how many cards they're going to have in their hand. You're going to go ahead and shuffle the deck of cards that you have extra from the race and the class in here, and deal out 6 uh, from each deck to their opponents, or to, your, to yourself, sorry. <laughs> and then you're going to give your card, I mean, this is how we do it. We shuffle these cards up just like this. These are the leader cards, so one person is going to be the leader, and then we simply flipped them over. Person who's got the crown is the party leader. Get rid of that one there. You've got your two dice set over here for using for combat, and your elf token, which you'll be using there. Uh, the money is set aside here. The bosses are over here. The extra monsters that are going to be coming out are, are right here, which will fill in the board. You've got locations. These are the ones you're not going to be using anymore because you went ahead and set the stuff here, which I'll talk about in a second. You've got your treasures here. You've got your critical fails and your protest cards. Now, setting up locations is pretty simple, like I discussed before. You have the Dragon's Den here, which is in the last three cards. You're going to take that, you're going to shuffle it up really good, and then you're going to place it down on the location. You're going to take four additional cards from the top of the location deck, shuffle that up too, and place it on top just like that. After that, you've got the party leader, and he's going to go ahead and select the location. He's going to take two cards from the top of the deck. He's going to look at them, and he's going to determine which one is the best one for him to play. Move these cards off to the side, and then place one just like that. This card is going to be removed. You no longer need it. Uh, so over here, once you've gone ahead and chose your location, you're going to look at all the different things in the card. The first thing you're going to see is how many monsters are going to spawn, including a boss, and if it ha provided it has a beware token, which there is no beware here, so there's no boss that's going to spawn, as well as the amount of treasures that are going to pop up. This is the treasure deck here, so we're going to go ahead and take five and put them out so everybody can see them. These are the things you can earn throughout the game as you're going to be rolling dice. Uh, then you're going to go ahead and see the amount of coins that are going to be allocated for this specific location. So I put 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Every other player is going to get a 3 to start with as well. Let's go ahead and place on your board somewhere. And then after they've done that, you're going to go ahead and uh, put out the monsters for that location. So I'm going to do a 1, 2, three, and notice that whenever an ambusher comes out, he's instantly going to go to that ambusher location, so he's going to go right there, and simply four. If this guy ever goes, another ambusher is going to go ahead and fill in his slot. Once the monsters are filled on, on the board, then the party leader is going to select which monster they are going to be fighting as a team. So it's kind of a cooperative game. Uh, maybe they want to, for instance, go ahead and fight the grizzly bear. So the grizzly bear will go right here. Now also, after, uh, when the party leader selects location, they're also going to do whatever it says on that location. Uh, if there are two players drawing uh, with, uh, uh, sorry, if there are two players drawing with least gold, you choose. Okay, that's pretty cool here. Oh, also, sorry, uh, it's, you only get to choose, when you're choosing, you don't actually choose anyone you want. You technically have to choose the far left one or the ambusher. Those are your two choices. So if you were to choose this one and remove it, then you can choose the next one here. So actually, we'll go ahead and choose the Frostbite. So here we go. It also says it has a freeze ability, has some flavor text. It also gives you two treasures when you defeat it and two coins. It tells you how much defense it uh, has, how much you need to basically roll in order to beat it. And in order to fight it, you're going to have to have one of these four categories of numbers uh, the equivalent or higher. If you fail, you're going to take damage based on this number here. Now, after that is all set up, you've got the monster you're choosing to fight. And if you actually get hit by him, you'll get hit by him as well. You got all your treasure out, you got your location. Now let's go back to the player boards here. You're going to have a hand of six cards to begin the game. And there's two main types. You're going to have the attack cards from either uh, your class or your race, along with stuff called bungles. Bungles are things you're going to be able to play on your opponent that are going to affect them in some negative way, whether it be negatives to their 
uh, their ability to fight the monster, or negatives to their roll that increase their likelihood to critically fail. To begin, though, you have to choose if you want to play or pass. If you want to play, you have to play an attack to begin with. So, for instance, since I am the leader here as the human priest, I am going to go ahead and choose to play. I'm going to go ahead and choose to try and fight. And I need to match a 4, 2, 7, or a 5. So, I could choose to play something like this guy, Versatile. It's a plus 2 on all of them, but I can choose any one I want to use. So, um, when we're attacking, we're all done with this phase. I can choose this plus 2 to fire, and I can choose to fight the Frost Sprite with my fire, which is enough to take him down. If I didn't have enough, uh, and I didn't have this fire here, I'd have this plus 2 here, and then I could go ahead and use a mace. Now, I can use my weapons too if I want. After I've chosen to play my first attack, my next player in order is going to get to choose. So, this player here, he's got some bungles here. He's got an attack, a plus three there, uh, which will actually work because with this plus three, I have another plus three right there, and that would be six to his five. Then the next player is going to get another chance. If he doesn't want to play anything anymore, he doesn't have to. This whole attack phase is simply for this one frost sprite, so choosing to play might help, might not. Uh, for instance, now I'm going to go ahead and play a bungle as opposed to an attack. Now this bungle says, uh, give the party leader token to the bungled hero, so I'd have to actually pass this over to him. This symbol means that it happens whenever you play a card, and it also means that whenever he rolls, if he rolls a 7 for this attack specifically, he's going to critically fail. I have to draw one of these cards here, uh, provided he can even attack it, because it's a minus 2 now to his uh, shadow damage or his dark damage, and so now he's got a 3 and a 3 if he wanted to use this for 6, so that would actually make him a minus, uh, make him a four, which would not be enough. So he's been successfully bungled. His turn is over. He played his card. Now this player is going to do the same. Maybe he wants to also play a bungled card. So for instance, maybe I want to play this card over here. This is uh, the greater race. Gives minus two. And also it's another critical fail problem. And this is take the party leader token. So when he plays this, the, the elf would actually get to take the party leader token, but he doesn't need to because he already has it. Now back to this player again. Does he want to play a second attack or does he want to play uh, nothing because he want to pass, but I think he's going to go ahead and attempt to fight one more time. So he will play the Hammer of the Gods. Uh, now this player is going to get a chance as well. Is there something he wants to try and fight with? Maybe not. Maybe he'll actually just go ahead and pass. Now to begin, uh, the party leader is going to begin the fight. Um, and the problem is when he goes to fight this guy here, he has to be able to beat one of these things here. Uh, this does not give him enough. He only has a three, he basically has a one here. And plus if he used this, that would only give him a four. So instead he'd have to actually use both of these weapons on his attack, which would then give him a plus four to his physical and he could choose to fight. Uh, so he's going to go ahead and do that. So he's attacked both of his weapons here, which is dangerous dangerous because you only get to do them once per location unless you can refresh them in some way and now he's going to roll both these die here all right let's see what happens okay so we have a 16 for him and we have a one for the creature Okay, so we have a 16 for the creature, and we have a 1 for him. So that means he did terrible. And now, how are you going to compare it is pretty simple. This 16 is going to go into his defense, and if you look at it, you're going to add all the cards he provided, which is a 2 and an 8, which is a total of 10. 16 beats that 10, so this creature is going to go ahead and hit him for 2 damage. And also, whenever he does damage, discard any further attacks uh, that, you have, uh, that you have at this encounter. So if you had any further attacks, they'd be discarded. This 1 is going to go into his... 14, but he also gets a plus one, which means he's going to be doing two to his 14, which is not even nearly enough. Uh, and he also critically failed because he rolled a seven or less. Normally it's just a one, but with this bungle card, it makes it a seven or less. So he's going to actually have to draw this uh, critical fail card. Uh, take three additional wounds. He got trigger trapped. One, two, and three. That is not good. If he ever goes to zero, uh, he's going to lose one of his card hand sizes and go to five. And the only way he's actually able to get this card hand size back is if he healed the full, then you go back again. But uh, he's been damaged, so that that that's that's very sad. Let's go ahead and discard this. Now we go to the next player's attack, which would be this guy here. He's got a minus two to pretty much everything, and the only way I think he could even bother is actually I think he's pretty much uh, not going to be able to do anything with this <laughs> with this because of the bungle. So they're going to go ahead and roll once again a thirteen and a two, and he doesn't even get to roll. I don't even think. Oh, he does, but. It doesn't matter. It just fails, right? And he has a critical fail, so that's <laughs> extra awful. Uh, yet again, uh, he once again smoked this guy, removing all further attacks done to him. And not only that, giving him a critical fail, he takes in two damage, and you get this uh, concealed chest here. Draw a monster card and gain the gold depicted on it and shuffle it back into the deck. Well, at least that's pretty good, right? Draw a monster card, 
then you can get the gold, which is three, and put it in your little pool here, and then you get to shuffle this monster card back into the deck. So sometimes the critical fails will actually give you some kind of bonus or benefit for doing terrible during the game. And so that would be pretty much the end of this encounter. Uh, not only that, but also to note, since both of these got hit by this guy, the ambusher is going to do it at damage to them as well. Every time that you get hit, if there's an ambusher in the location, they're going to take an additional damage. Now, you do that usually when it happens, but I just figured to explain it all in one. It'd be nice and easy to explain how that works. Both of them got hit, and so the ambusher is going to smoke them. Uh, these cards are going to go ahead and get discarded. This guy is going to then run away. And we uh, can shuffle this back in the deck. And then the party leader is once again going to get to select a new monster. They're going to try and fight the ogre or the goblin. Probably the goblin this time, right? He's easier to deal with. And uh, if he dies, though, this guy's going to pop into his location. So he gets pretty nasty, I think. Um, but nevertheless, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Look at the rules for that, I'm pretty sure. But nevertheless, uh, he goes here, and you're going to be fighting once again. You're going to be putting down your cards, and you're only going to keep the cards that you currently have in your hand to use to fight against this specific monster. If you have not enough cards, let's say for some reason these guys didn't have enough cards to, to, to utilize, then at that point, they would choose to pass. So he would pass, the leader would go over to him, and if he chose to pass as well, the leader would go back to this player here, and and then the new location is going to get selected. These so guys, if they chose to leave, then this grizzly bear is going to try and hit them. So he's going to actually take the die and roll. He did an 18, which hits both of them, unfortunately. And so they're both going to take three damage. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. And it says maul three. Roll uh, to hit again for an additional wound up to three times or until a miss. 16. Oh, my goodness. So this guy's going to take... He's going to die. <laughs> And this guy's going to take three more. And, oh, okay, they both it failed this time. So he would stop. And then these guys are all going to basically vanish. If there was a boss involved, it's also going to be shuffled back into this deck here. And the location is going to disappear along with the money. Whatever money was collected is going to go to the players. And whatever money is not goes back in the pool here. These items here will vanish too, um, provided that they didn't go to the player. If they did, they'd go into the discard pile of the player, or into the hand of the player. And uh, at that point, afterwards, you're going to shuffle your cards back into your deck and draw a new hand size. So these guys here didn't make it, unfortunately. But then uh, this guy is going to go away. And then next, uh, the leader again is going to get to select two new cards, pick another location, and continue the game. Uh, uh, after, eventually, uh, it's likely going to be either two or uh, three, three or four rounds. You're going to find this dragon's den here. And you're going to have to choose specifically to fight this at uh, this location. So this guy will actually come up. And in which case, you're going to have to actually bring the boss in. This is actually the boss, Crackletooth. But uh, this one over, over here says it's the uh, Beware of the Etten, right? So you'd have to actually look for, let's see, where's the Etten at? And right here. And this guy would go right there. And that's going to be the boss of this specific location. But you keep going back and forth and fighting. It's a pretty simple style game, right? You're going to have attacks. You choose attacks. You can choose to bungle attacks. Play your second, play your third. Fight the monster. The monster's either going to die or hurt you. Then a, the new monster is going to pop up based on the leader's choice. Continue fighting until both players pass. When everybody's done passing, if there's any monsters left, the, the guy over here is going to hit them. And along with whenever somebody hits them, the ambusher is going to do it. And then uh, the location is going to go, and a new location will come out until the dragon's den pops up, in which case you fight the dragon, and uh, that would be the game over. Now, remember, let's go ahead and show you a couple of the cards here. You're going to be getting new cards to your deck every time you defeat monsters. It's a winner-take-all scenario. If you beat the monster, you're going to get the treasure it says, and you're going to choose from the, the stack here. Um, and you're going to be able to use weapons like this one here, plus is three, uh, this uh, shield, uh, this uh, plate here, which you can actually replace your, uh, your different uh, armors, along with just a bunch of other additional weapons. There's actually some bungles as well that are included in here, I think, and uh, some other nasty things, or very, very, very powerful things. So there's quite a lot of treasures that you're not going to go through nearly at all. Um, and that's the basic idea of the game. The person who has the most currency at the end of the game is going to be the winner. All right, let's talk about it. Okay, so Hero Master. Two critical errors in my point. One is the green die is, is used for the heroes, and in fact, it's stated on the... Uh, on the card itself, it shows you a green die, so that means it's for the heroes, not for the creatures. I mean, it didn't affect really gameplay, but just so you get an idea that it is color coordinated, I blame my cameraman. Also, when an ambusher dies, if there's an ambusher on the uh, 
on the tableau in the area where the monsters are, a new ambusher is going to fill in. If there's no other ambushers, then no ambusher is going to go in. Um, so there wasn't any of that specific point on thing. Oh, then there was, uh, but it, yeah, it would go in if there was another ambusher. So you always have to deal with them when they're there. And if you don't, they're going to attack you when you get hit by other monsters. So making that choice between the two is kind of up to you. So what is it about Hero Master? Well, this game is basically like Cutthroat Caverns in a way. You're playing against, uh, you're playing with your uh, your allies as you fight monsters monsters in different locations and deal with bosses. However, everybody wants to get that kill and nobody else wants to share any of the, le the, le the treasure or the loot as well as the coin. So you're going to be working together to make sure that the monster dies, sort of, but in reality it's all about you. You're specifically trying to play uh, your different weapons and whatnot and stop your opponents from doing damage to them. Um, in games like Cutthroat Caverns, it's a certain point in which you're going to be like, okay, you can do 20 damage and I'll do 30 damage and you'll do 50, but then I'll do the final little bit of damage and that's kind of that take that. That. and this one actually it's an all or nothing instantaneously it's I want to be party leader I want to attack first and I want to kill the monster oh you do well that's too bad because I'm gonna let you be party leader but I'm also gonna bungle you to guarantee your first attack fails and then put a really nice attack out oh is that the case well in that case I'm gonna bungle you then and I'm gonna put up my second attack and so on and so forth right you get it uh, it has this fun flavorful text on all of the different cards, which is really, really nice. Really, really added to the fun. Stop saying it can't be real. It's there in front of you, shouted the wizard. It's a lava monster, right? And so it has that beautiful flavor. And not only that, but all the artwork is spectacular. I really, really enjoy Jamie's artwork. I've always uh, thought he did some really, really good stuff here. The game plays excellently. I really, really enjoy Cutthroat Caverns, and this just gave me a big a nostalgia for that game. I like. I felt the the differences, but yet the feel of like working together, but not really. In this game, you're technically not working together at all, but you feel like you're a party trying to fight all the monsters on the board. But in reality, you're just kind of like that one guy in World of Warcraft who comes over and shivs your monster just as you're about to kill it. It, it has that feel in the game. All the treasures are so unique and interesting, and you always want to get them because they're much better than the stuff you have already. Your decks all feel very different, and I didn't talk about it a lot, but each of the Different characters has their own unique abilities. They can do different stuff like gaining three hit on your attack when you roll, or simply uh, you may combine two types of damage, regular fire and ice, spirit, uh, spirit instead of, I said purple or something like that. But you can combine a different attacks to basically fight the monster, which is going to benefit you. And you'll tap these guys up, you'll, you'll utilize all the cards on your board, and you don't get to refresh them until the next location, except certain cards like the class and race, it will tell you when, based on other cards, you have to earn the right to use these guys again. Dying doesn't necessarily take you out of the game, but it does kind of cripple you with your hand size, and having less cards in your hands mean, means doing less things to your opponent and being less likely to fight monsters because there's only so many cards you have and so many monsters you have to deal with throughout the game. It's pretty quick. It's not actually that much. Uh, I thought it was going to be longer than it actually is because you're only taking maybe three rounds to the game. I don't know why I said seven to begin with, but yeah, it's only three. You're going to be able to draw two. It's seven cards. You have three in the bottom and four on the top. But you're going to take them, look at, look at them, and being party leader is very, very powerful and very, very dangerous because everyone wants to mess with you. Now, you can't bungle somebody more than once in each different attack location, but the bungle are very powerful and can mess you up. A couple other unique twists to the game that I really enjoyed were these little protest cards at the end of every round for the person with the lowest uh, gold or whatever. You're going to be able to take one of these guys here and utilize it for the next round and place it back into the deck there. And whenever you critically fail, like I showed you, you're going to have these critical fail cards. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. Sometimes you'll bungle somebody, think it's going to mess them up, and it does hurt them. Uh, and then it extra hurts them with these, or maybe they get an extra little bit of gold because they fell, stumbled after they're getting attacked and they hit their head on a treasure chest and pick up all the letters. Uh, the game has a comic val comedic value that a uh, game like Cutthroat Caverns does not have. And I think it has a lot to do with the flavor and the artwork. But overall, it's a wonderfully done game. It's pretty simple once you get the basic idea down and understand how the turns work. Because you have two different sets of play. Uh, with the board itself, with all the locations of the monsters and how that's working on. And then the point in which you're going to be putting the attacks down in, your, in, in turn order. Placing them and choosing to bumble and whatnot. So, that's the basic idea of the game. Overall, though, the game's really fun. Really enjoyable. If you like Cutthroat Caverns, if you like games that are going to be like hack and slash, take that, you're going to enjoy this game. If you don't like mean games, although in a comical way, you're not going to really enjoy this game because it has that back and forth that can really upset certain people, if you know what I mean. It's really tear families apart if, you, if you're not okay with things happening to you and you think you're going to fight the monster and beat it. Um, but mechanically, it works really well. Very smooth, very solid game. I'm definitely going to want to play this again. I approve. Excellent game.
All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help. We do really appreciate it, as well as checking out the game Hero Master, which is going to be on Kickstarter in the description below. You can also go and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We've got tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more, as well as check out our friends, everythingboardgames.com, and the giveaway. The two great giveaway sites that do a lot of great stuff, and you should definitely check them out. All right, guys, that's all I got this time. And as always, I look forward to dealing with scary locations and stabbing you in the back at the same time next time.